Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Lord, I am weary after a long day. I lift my chin and look to you. I offer you the cares from the day, the concerns of my heart, and the things that keep me up at night. Take my sincere yet imperfect offerings and miraculously multiply them to meet the needs around me. When I crawl under the covers tonight, help me to remember that I'm not under my circumstances. I'm safe under the shadow of your wing. Cover me with sweet, nourishing sleep tonight. Oh, how I love you. In the name above all names, I pray and ask it all, Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Well, thank you for coming back to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open, Everything Will Change. And uh, the, the prayer I, that we just offered up to the Lord was sent to me right before I was about to make this video. Uh, uh, got this text message of this prayer. And so uh, I thought I would pray it with you guys at the beginning of this video because it spoke to me. And uh, I know the Lord, he hears our prayers because uh, the God of Israel will never sleep nor slumber. But his ears and his eyes are always open, waiting for us to call on him so that we can be in alignment with his will and his purposes. Because his favor is upon those who diligently seek him. and. I know all of us who uh, are tuning into this channel and those who are part of the body of Christ, we are all one in him. And because we are all one in him, his goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our life. And so because we know the promises of God to be yes and amen, today I want to talk about the promises of God, which are yes and amen. And because all the promises in him are yes and amen, we understand that God is about to move in order to fulfill the promise that we are all waiting for, which is the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth, in the cloud. And on that glorious day, we are going to assemble in the clouds to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with our Lord. And the Bible gives us scripture after scripture after scripture to tell us about what to expect leading up to that glorious day when the yes and amen will be fulfilled when we see him face to face, when we see him just as he is and when we put on immortality and death will be swallowed up in victory. And because the Bible tells us so much about this soon coming day, it is always needful for us to meet together, hallelujah, and discuss these things because the Bible tells us to comfort one another with the words of the rapture, with the promise of his coming, with the promise of his appearing when he will suddenly come and be admired by all those who are yearning to be with him. And so with the knowledge of the scriptures that we have, I want to talk about how truth is stranger than fiction, because I want to show some things that we see going on in the secular world uh, because God calls us to be in the world, but not of it. 
And I want to bring our attention to what is going on out there in the world because the world is being prepared for a strong delusion. The world is being primed for a strong delusion. And truth <laughs> is stranger than fiction, which is why you are reading this um, definition of what that means, which states sometimes what actually happens is more bizarre than anything that could have been imagined. You see? The world, uh, they come out with movies and shows and uh, trying to describe what's going to happen at the time of the end. But all of these shows and movies and programs that the world has pumped out from Mad Max to the Book of Eli, uh, uh, to Armageddon, to, uh, you know, on down the list, The Omen, you know, it, uh, uh, The Purge, you know, every, every, every demonic, every satanic, every uh, type of Hollywood uh, special, uh, you know, that they've pumped out is only a fraction of how truth, of how truly the end times is going to be. It's only a fraction. It's only, it's only a fraction. Okay. It's only uh, the imaginations of fallen man that pumps out these videos because what is actually going to happen according to what thus saith the Lord will be far more bizarre than anything that could have been imagined. I only have to point you to Revelation chapter nine to prove that. Revelation chapter nine, uh, that, that could be the proof text in and of itself. And that's just one example when the bottomless pit is open. And when that day comes, oh, it's a terrible day. When that day comes, there, there, there's no, a Hollywood movie that can describe it. You know, they try to do it with zombies and stuff like that, but that's the figment of man's imagination. What will actually happen on that day when that fifth trumpet is sounded will be more bizarre, more bizarre than anything that could have ever been imagined. Because in those days, the truth tells us that men will seek death and shall not find it. And they shall desire to die. And death shall flee from them. You can't put that into no Hollywood picture. No one can truly understand what that means because it's never happened before. But we know that it will happen here very shortly. And when it comes, woe to anyone who's left behind in that day. You see, and that's the thing that I want to get into with this teaching. You see, the good times are rolling. The good times are rolling just like the Bible said it would be up until the time when we go up, because the Bible tells us that everything will continue just as it was in the days of Noah. And even Peter said that in the last days, mockers would come, you know? Mockers would come and they would scoff at the coming of King Jesus in the clouds. They would mock and they would scoff those of us who hold to the promises of God. And they would cry out with their hypocritical hearts and say, where is the promise of his coming? For all things continue just as they always have. 
since the days of our fathers. You see, how many people do you run across day after day mocking the coming of Jesus Christ in the clouds? All of us go through that ridicule. But we know that the Bible says it would be just as it was in the days of Noah, just as it was in the days of Lot. Everything was business as usual. Business is booming, hallelujah, especially for the well-favored harlot, <laughs> the one who sits on many waters. The one who cries out, I shall sit as a lady forever. Oh, yes. Especially the mistress of witchcrafts. Oh, yeah. Especially for the country who cries out, MAGA, MAGA, MAGA. Let the good times roll. Okay. You see, everything is booming. Uh, hallelujah. Just like the Bible says it would in the last days. And that's what I want to get to right now. So let's go to a couple of news articles and let's paint this picture because the truth is stranger than fiction. Now watch this now because we're going to go over some things and I pray that you're uh, in tune on the same wavelength as the Holy Spirit. And I trust that you are because you're tuned in. Hallelujah. Uh, and so here we go. This is uh, from the Market Insider, December 8th, 2019. For the first time in U.S. history, a decade will pass without the country falling into a recession. Read the bullet points. In every decade since the period immediately before the Civil War, the U.S. economy could be relied on to do one thing, tumble into recession. But the American economy is on pace to defy that trend for the first time in nearly 170 years as it enters the 2020s. The two, the 2010s would be the first time a decade has come and gone without the nation falling into recession, which is commonly defined as two consecutive quarters of contracting GDP, gross domestic product. Economists told Business Insider some supporting factors include the extremely slow recovery and people continuously looking for work. And then I'm going to read this, and then uh, I want you to pay attention to a couple key words. In every decade since the period immediately before the Civil War, the U.S. economy could be relied on to do one thing, tumble into a recession. The last one stretched from December 2007 until June 2009 unleashing 18 months of massive job losses and historic rates of home foreclosures. The severe downturn also triggered a global financial crisis that some experts say contributed to the rise of authoritarian and populist leaders around the world. But the American economy is likely to defy that trend for the first time in nearly 170 years as it enters the 2020s. The two, 2010s would be the first decade, uh, would be the first time a decade has come and gone without the nation falling into recession, which is commonly defined as two consecutive quarters of contracting GDP. The close of the decade will cap an extraordinary period for the U.S. economy, one that saw it recover from the depths of the Great Recession and lock in a record interval of sustained growth. President Obama steered an economy on the verge of collapse and helped put it back on track, which was continued under President Trump. So you get the picture. The good times are rolling. And this is monumental history that we are experiencing uh, because we are alive for such a time as this. So uh, a decade is going to pass 
without the U.S. economy falling into a recession. The first time in U.S. history, the first time since immediately before the Civil War. And so remember the Civil War, because I'm going to show you a clip about how truth is stranger than fiction. Remember the Civil War. And who was the president of the Civil War? Well, it was none other than Abraham Lincoln. Okay, so just keep that in the back of your mind as we continue to work through this. So you get the picture. Uh, the uh, To put it in a biblical context, uh, remember uh, the story of Joseph. Joseph said that there would be uh, seven years of plenty in all the land of Egypt. But then there would be seven years of famine and the seven years of plenty would be forgotten. So uh, this speaks of how there has been uh, nothing but plenty in uh, the U.S. economy. Everything is at an all-time high, especially now, as we go to this next uh, article right here. November 26, 2019, U.S. stocks end at all-time highs. Major indexes clinch 10th record close of November. So here we see that uh, the stock market is at an all-time high, okay? The stock market uh, is at an all-time high, and because the stock market is at an all-time high, everything is going fine and dandy. <laughs> everything is going fine and dandy for those who have all the money. Okay, and uh, for those who are, uh, you know, doing pretty well, and for, you know, just uh, maybe even uh, most average Americans, okay, and uh, because America sits at the top of the totem pole, uh, uh, when America goes, so goes the world, because as we read uh, last decade, uh, when that uh, financial bubble uh, burst, you know, it affected uh, all the global markets. And so uh, whenever something like that happens to America, it also affects the whole world. Uh, but when America is, is thriving, when America is being great again, uh, it affects all the world's economies because uh, everything is connected uh, with the well-favored harlot. And so I brought up the story of Joseph because we know that in the story of Joseph, Joseph was in Egypt. And Egypt is always symbolic of the world. Okay, Egypt is symbolic of the world, but there's also a narrow focus that we can apply with Egypt because I believe Egypt is also a type of America who is the leader of the free world. Okay, and I want to prove this and I want to show you some things because remember how we read that this is the first time in U.S. history that a decade is going to pass without a country falling into a recession, without the United States falling into a recession. And the last time it happened like that was before the Civil War. So I'll keep that Civil War in the back of your mind because I want to show you how the truth is stranger than fiction, okay? Now look at this, Isaiah chapter 19, the burden concerning Egypt. Verse one, the burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, okay? So when you see the Lord riding upon a swift cloud, you should know that that is the rapture. Okay, that's the cloudy day. When the Lord rides upon a swift cloud, that is the cloudy day. When he comes from east to west, okay, when he comes from the east to the west, the Son of Man shall come like lightning that flashes from the east to the west. That's when he rides on the swift cloud. When he rides on the swift cloud, it's the cloudy day. And what's going to happen? He's going to come into Egypt. So, yes, he's going to come across the whole world because Egypt is a type of the world. But also, 
Egypt is also a type of Babylon the Great, that great city who rules over all the kings of the world. Okay. And so he says, when this day comes, when the Lord rides upon a swift cloud, he shall come into Egypt and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Verse two, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians and they shall fight every one against his brother and every one against his neighbor, city against city and kingdom against kingdom. Verse three. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to wizards. Verse 4. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Okay, so uh, there's a lot going on in these first four verses, but I want to focus in on the Lord riding upon that swift cloud when he comes into Egypt. And there's two typologies. Egypt is a type of the world, and Egypt is also a type of Babylon the Great. Because when you look at America, what is the biggest obelisk in all the world? What's the biggest obelisk in all the world? Seven fascinating facts about obelisk. Obelisks, what? Number one, they were built by the ancient Egyptians, though only a few remain in Egypt. So obelisk originated in Egypt. Okay, and in today's day and age, where is the biggest obelisk in all the world? Where's it at? <laughs> Do we need rocket science to figure this out? No, we don't need rocket science. Because you know the truth. The tallest obelisk in the world is the Washington Monument. First conceived in 1832, the Washington Monument took decades to build. It is by law the tallest structure in the District of Columbia and is twice as tall as any other obelisk in the world. It's two times as big as any other obelisk in the world. You talk about modern day Egypt. Okay, it's none other than that well-favored harlot, Babylon the Great. Okay, the breadbasket of all the world, just as it was in the days of Joseph. When Joseph said that there would be seven years of plenty, but then there would be seven years of famine, and the seven years of plenty would never be remembered. You see, and right now, it's the seven years of plenty. It's been the seven years of plenty. MAGA, everything is at an all-time high. Everything is going great. Everything is all peaches and cream, okay? The proof is in the pudding, but there's going to come a day real soon when the Lord is going to ride upon his swift cloud and that day is going to come suddenly. And when that day comes suddenly, if you are left behind in that day, God says he's going to set a cruel Lord and a fierce king over everyone who's left behind. And here comes the kicker, because I'm pretty sure you guys are well aware of this Netflix show that is coming out called the Messiah. And notice these notice what we just read in this in this clip because not only do you see the Lincoln Memorial as a prominent feature, the first time that you see 
uh, the Antichrist, because that's who he is, the first time that he shows his face, what do you see in the background? You see the Washington Monument. I mean, you can't make this up even if you tried. Okay? This is demonic to the core. Okay? Because they're making a mockery of the Bible. Okay, because we know that these people who make these shows, it's not the flesh and blood that is doing it. It's the principalities behind them. Okay, because they got a plan. Yeah, they got a plan. And God already called them out. He already called them out in Isaiah chapter 19. If you're left behind, you're going to have to see the cruel Lord. You will have to see the fierce king. Okay. Because if you're not caught up when the Lord rides upon a swift cloud, when if you're not caught up on the day of sudden destruction, oh, if you're not caught up when God will shake all the idols because of his presence, okay, and Babylon the Great, modern day Egypt will receive that double portion of destruction. If you are not caught up on that day, Oh, you're going to have to see the cruel Lord. You're going to have to see the fierce king. Okay. And here goes a taste. But remember, the truth is stranger than fiction. Now look at the Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Monument and the Antichrist. Look at this. He's come out of nowhere and we don't know who he is. What do we know about him? Lincoln Memorial. Leading desperate people. So this is a cult? We don't know who he's associated with. He could be creating an army. Lincoln Memorial. Obelisk. Leading them to their death. Look at it. Look at his face. Washington Monument right there. Look at that. Look at that. Tell me that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, this is, this, you see, we're dealing with principalities here, okay? We're, we're dealing with the arch enemy himself, okay? It couldn't be any more blatant than that. The Lincoln Memorial, pictured first, and then right when the Antichrist shows his face, what's in the back? The biggest obelisk in the world, okay? You talk about the fierce king okay you talk about the cruel lord okay you don't want to see his face my friends you don't want to see the face of the cruel lord you don't want to see the face of the fierce king you don't want to see the face of the serpent okay you see because what's coming my friends is 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 it's it's incomprehensible this this blasphemous uh, uh production put on by netflix from the pits of hell is a preparation to dull the minds of the masses to the truth of what thus saith the lord you see because when he appears when he shows his face okay when, 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 when he shows his face, okay, when he shows his face, you better not be around to see it. You better not be around to see it. Look at this, the, the, the Washington Monument, the biggest obelisk, the first time in this trailer when they uh, meticulously set this up by uh, the powers of darkness, the first time he shows his face in the trailer, he shows it, and the obelisk is right behind him. It's right here in Isaiah chapter 19. When Egypt falls, when Egypt falls, that is when the cruel Lord, that is when the fierce king appears. You see, but if you're caught up in the swift cloud, you see the Lord, he's riding first, hallelujah. <laughs> You see, the Lord, he going to ride first. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, the Lord, he going to ride. Hallelujah. But the question is, will you be caught up to catch the ride to the Father's house? <laughs> Hallelujah. Will you be caught up faster than you can blink? Will you be caught up in the twinkling of an eye? 
Will you be caught up when the voice from heaven says, Come up here? Will you be caught up in the swift cloud on the cloudy day, my friend? That's the question. You see, because if you ain't caught up right here, <laughs> if you ain't caught up when the Lord rides upon a swift cloud, if you ain't caught up when the Lord takes away the restrainer, oh yeah, oh, if you ain't caught up on the day when God shouts, <laughs> well, you already know. This is what you're going to have to see. This is what you're going to have to see. You're going to have to see this guy show his face. You're going to have to see this guy show his face. Oh, and God says, if you ain't up here with the swift cloud, you're going to be given over into the hand of a cruel Lord. And a fierce king will rule over you. And that is just the beginning okay you see because when he appears when uh, the antichrist appears what does god say he's going to do amos chapter 8 behold the days come saith the lord god that i will send a famine in the land not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Oh, yeah. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. There's going to be a lot of parched people in that day. There's going to be a lot of parched people in that day. No one to give them any water because the cruel Lord has appeared. No one to give them any food because the fierce king is ruling and he says if you want food okay <laughs> if you want that bowl of stew oh because this famine oh my goodness oh this famine is multifaceted and because uh, people who are left behind uh, will be devoid of any spiritual understanding because there is no water. There's no one telling them the truth. They will sell their soul for a bowl of soup. Oh, you want to eat in the kingdom of the fierce king. You want to get that bowl of soup. You got to take the mark. Oh, yeah. The truth is stranger than fiction. You got to take the mark if you want bread and water in that day. Okay. You got to be Esau. You got to sell your birthright. You got to despise the blessing. You got to sell your birthright to the fierce king. Okay. You got to take that mark and sell your soul for a bowl of stew. It's a cruel Lord, my friends. The Bible uh, pulls no punches. This is just one example of many. But as you can see, the truth is stranger than fiction. Here we have an article written a couple of days ago which mentions the Plenty that the United States is experiencing for the first time in 170 years, not since the days prior to the Civil War. Okay. The Civil War where Abraham Lincoln was president. Okay. And then you get to uh, this movie about the Messiah, 
two times they showed the Lincoln Memorial. And right before, right before, right before he shows his face, right, right, right when he shows his face, what, the, what appears? The Washington Monument. The Washington Monument, the biggest obelisk in the world. Modern day Egypt, my friends. Modern day Egypt is the land of plenty. Just like Joseph's dream, it's the land of plenty. Seven years of plenty. Seven years of plenty. Okay, the America has been going through plenty and plenty and plenty and plenty. It's the well-favored harlot. Okay, it's Babylon the Great. Okay, the one who trades in all the world's goods. The one who makes all the kings of the earth rich through the abundance of her luxuries. Read it right there in Revelation chapter 18. It's the one who says that she can never be defeated. But God says on the day of sudden destruction, Babylon will come tumbling down. And that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning of the fall of this place in the background. Because now he's turned his face. Now the restrainer has been removed. And now you see his face. If you're left behind. You see, so the question is, are you willing to gamble with your soul? Are you willing to gamble and roll the dice with your soul? You see, because what's coming, my friends, is the gamble of all gambles. What's coming, my friends, is the gamble of all gambles. So if you really think that you want to roll the dice with God, hey, you got your own free will. <laughs> All I could do is tell you that you're going you gonna to roll snake eyes. <laughs> Either way, you're going to roll snake eyes. Either way, you're going to roll snake eyes if you gamble with God. Okay, because if you gamble and you say you can be a prepper, you can, you could, you could hunker down. <laughs> you, you can hunker down. Okay, you can, you can go into your bunker and you can prepare for what's coming. You can prepare for the apocalypse. <laughs> okay, go ahead and gamble. But guess what, my friends? Even if you somehow survive the cloudy day, okay? <laughs> even if you somehow, okay? Even if you somehow survive. When the Lord rides upon a swift cloud, oh, because there will be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Okay. If you somehow survive the swift cloud, okay, <laughs> you still gonna roll snake eyes <laughs> because now you are gonna be given over into the hand of a cruel lord and a fierce king shall rule over you because now you got to see his face oh my goodness it's snake eyes either way <laughs> it's snake eyes either way Okay, you don't want to gamble with God. You don't want to gamble with God. You don't want to hedge your bets. You don't want to bet at all. What you want to do is give your life to Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You want to accept him as your Lord and Savior by calling upon his name. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, we shall be saved. Do it today. Do it now. Don't wait another second. Drop down to your knees and cry out if you haven't cried out right now. And give your life to Jesus Christ because what's coming is stranger than fiction. What's coming 
is more strange and more bizarre than anything that anyone could imagine. This isn't even a smidgen. Whatever they're showing in this preview is not even a smidgen of what's going to happen when the door, when, when the door, oh my goodness, hallelujah for me and you who know him. But when the door to the father's house opens, you can't even imagine the destruction. <laughs> okay, it's God who's coming. You can't imagine it. You can't imagine it. But the Bible goes at length to describe what's going to happen. And God says when he comes down and he rides upon a swift cloud, he says the mountains will be molten under him. Okay. Tell me what that means. I'll wait. Tell me what that means. I'll wait. I'll wait for Hollywood to make a movie that can show the mountains melting. I'll wait. Uh, I'll wait for uh, Hollywood to show me this. Oh, you want to see the swift cloud, huh? You want to see the swift cloud? Let's see the let's see the swift cloud when the Lord rise to get us. Verse twelve, Revelation six. And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, <laughs> the greatest earthquake in human history. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Oh, it's the dragon, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Oh, it's the east wind. Oh, yeah. Verse 14, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. I, I, I want to see Hollywood make that. But you know what? Hollywood don't have to make that because that will be a reality real, real, real soon. It's the cloudy day, my friends. And for those who wanted to gamble with God, look at them. Everyone left behind. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Ain't no Hollywood movie, TV production, Netflix abomination could ever describe on film what is really going to happen when these words are fulfilled. And we know that that day comes when the Lord rides upon a swift cloud. So my prayer is that you will be caught up in the swift cloud and that you won't have to get down here to verse four. You won't have to see verse four. You're up here. You're in the swift cloud, okay? Because that's where the body of Christ meets the Lord in the air. We're in the swift cloud and we go into the father's house because we are in the clouds of heaven, according to Daniel chapter seven. OK, you want to be caught up in the swift cloud on the cloudy day. So my prayer is that you will be. So that you will escape everything that is about to come on the earth, because when the great day of his wrath is come, look at the yes and the amen promise. When the great day of his wrath is come, what is the yes and the amen of his promise? I know that you're already saying it out there. All those who know him, you already know uh, what the yes and the amen promise is. Look at this, verse 9, for those who don't know, and for all of us who always have to be reminded, for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. 
who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. This is what we do. We edify one another. We talk about these things. We encourage one another. We comfort one another because God will not leave us behind. God will not let us see the day of his wrath. The day of his wrath is connected to the day when the swift cloud comes and Jesus Christ is on top. As Revelation chapter 14 tells us, Revelation chapter 14 shows us the swift cloud. Revelation chapter 14 shows us the swift cloud and then I'm done. Verse 14, Revelation 14, and I looked and behold a white cloud. That's the swift cloud. That's the cloudy day, my friends. This is the rapture. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. And upon the cloud, one sat like unto the Son of Man. That's Jesus. Having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Verse 15. Here comes Michael the archangel. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Every one of us who are reaped on this day, we're caught up in the swift cloud, right here called the white cloud. Isaiah 19 called the swift cloud. It's the cloudy day. All of us who are caught up on this day, we will escape his wrath because look, there's people left behind. Verse 17. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. It's the grapes of wrath, my friend. It's the grapes of wrath who are being gathered into the great wine press of the wrath of God. These are everyone who is left behind, who will have to see the cruel Lord, who will have to see the fierce king, who will have to see the face of the serpent. I pray that's not you. I love you. God bless you. For surely, King Jesus comes quickly. Maranatha. Amen.